Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today I am going to take on a topic that I, I do entire classes on. <laughs> so uh, I am going to try to fit this into five or six minutes, um, but believe me, I have taken 45 minutes to do this this very class. So uh, uh, be with me, bear, bear with me. Uh, we've got so many people calling about birds, um, the hawks in their backyard this time of year. And I've done other raptor programs. And I promise you that I would in the future do a, a, a program on just those those birds that raid our backyards. And, and, and in particular, that is the Cooper's hawk and the sharp shin hawk. But first, I want to eliminate a couple of birds um, that, that people are sometimes miscall them because they're more famous and they know those names a lot better. Um, sparrow hawk is a, a widely used common term that can refer to many different birds. Um, but classically, um, that, that is a, a small falcon that we don't see in backyards very often. Um, but I think a lot of times it just has to do with people seeing a hawk come by and trying to, to grab one of their birds and sparrow hawk's just an easy name that pops out there. So let me give you a couple of birds, show you a couple of birds that, that probably aren't visiting your backyard that sometimes get mislabeled that. Uh, let's see. Number one on the list, because they are very, very famous, probably the most famous raptor in the world, uh, is the peregrine falcon. I have people tell me all the time that they have that peregrine falcon chasing the birds in their backyard. That would be very, very uncommon if you had one of these birds in your backyard. Remember, these are endangered species. Um, they do nest. They do an introduction project, and there are some nests around Kansas City now. But rarely do we see these in urban backyards. These guys generally fly out to wetlands and, and feed on ducks and shorebirds, um, uh, pigeons in the city. I know uh, uh, it, they wish they would do more of that, but they, they do fly out a long way. I mean, this bird, the name means great wanderer, so it travels quite far. So notice those big, dark sideburns, the, 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 just a classic uh, raptor. Um, you probably don't have this bird in your backyard. So that's one that we don't have. And the other one that is uh, was officially known as the sparrow hawk um, in our area for many years until they changed his name several years ago is the American kestrel. This is the smallest falcon in North America, very colorful, very small bird, and really doesn't, it can't take on and kill. Uh, big birds. This bird uh, does catch other birds, but then mainly it catches mice and in the summer or definitely insects more than anything. Um, and, and people think, oh, I got that sparrow hawk. Well, for a bird watcher, this is the bird that comes to their mind. Um, but this is probably not the bird hunting in your backyard either. It's possible, but it probably isn't the case. Very colorful blue and red and the, and the sideburns. And there are not many of those around right now. These birds are more common in the in migration and in summer than they are here in the winter months so there's not many of them around the bird that is here and the bird that is definitely hunting your backyard it, it, it are the occipiter hawks the the true hawks and they're going to be i'm going to go through several things here to try to differentiate the two but you can uh if you want to take notes that's fine uh but just know that when it comes to coopers versus sharp shins they're both here in the winter and they're, uh, it, it's very confusing to people because their size overlap in the two. They look very much alike, um, and they both are have the habit of uh, hunting birds. They, they are bird catching hawks. They have long tails, fairly short wings uh, for maneuvering through forest and through um, uh, thick vegetation to catch birds. And, and they have that long tail. The tail's the rudder, so it enables them to, to make sharp turns and keep up with smaller prey and catch them. So they are quite often the birds that you see in your backyard hunting your birds. I know one of the local names for uh, I grew up with are blue darters. Um, that, the adult birds are a slate blue color and they come zipping through your yard so fast you go, whoa, what was that? You know, and it was that, that's where that name blue darter comes from because that's usually as quick as you get to see them. Now every so often they do perch up in the open uh, and usually these are usually younger, not so smart birds uh, because when the birds can see them, then, then they can get away from them. They, they count on the element of surprise to, to ambush the birds in your backyard. So how do we tell them apart? Well, first off, again, time of year. Cooper's hawks nest in Missouri. 
shark shins rarely nest in Missouri. They're a much more northern nester. There are a few documented nests in, in Missouri, but very few, and mainly in pine stands. But Cooper's hawks, if you see it, but one of these birds here in the summer months is almost always a Cooper's hawk. But in migration and in the, the winter months, they're both here. And there is a huge size overlap. For the most part, Coopers are much bigger and sharp shins are smaller. But a large female Cooper's hawk, big birds, they are large birds. They're about as big as a, uh, almost as a red tail hawk. A couple of pictures here, a nice big uh, female Cooper's hawk. She's quite large. But okay, so we're going to go through. Oh, there's this. Here's this huge female. Beautiful picture taken by my friend Michael Sandy a few years ago. Um, the, the size of this bird, and and this is feathers, and this big bulge right here in, in their craw and in, in, in their throat, that's her dinner. She's a, she has definitely consumed that bird. Um, notice the, the red eyes on the adult birds versus the yellow eyes on the juvenile birds. And, uh, but okay. Now, classic teachings on how to tell them apart. The first thing we go that most people go to is the tail. Um, the tail on these birds. Uh, it, it, the, let's see, I think this is a good one here. Yeah, this is a good picture here. Notice how the tail can just if you can see it in the, uh, on the camera is curved at the bottom. That a C for Cooper's hawk is curved versus a sharp shin hawk, which is square tailed, like that. S for for square tailed. There's a classic square tailed of a, of a sharp shin hawk. So that is quite a bit different from the rounded tail of that, that Cooper's. This is a squared off tail S for sharp shin. And that is a pretty good field mark. Again, tails wear, feathers wear, birds break feathers. They, they work, so they can't, there are exceptions to the rule, but that's a pretty good one. So another good indication I like to look at is the cap. Now, on a, uh, a sharp shin hawk, for the most part, their head looks much smaller. They have a very small looking head and the, 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 they have a helmeted look, I think. And that is the dart goes all the way past the back of the head and down the back. So it looks more like a helmet versus a Cooper's hawk, which has a very capped look. The very first picture I had up, uh, notice how this bird the dark is just up here on top of the head. It doesn't extend down the back. So it has a cap versus the helmet of the sharp shin hawk. Another good way to tell them apart. Again, that is in the adults. That's a good, a good indication there. But when, they get, when they're juveniles, they don't have that. And we mainly rely on the tail and the chest. And so we're looking at, when you're looking at these juvenile birds, the... The Cooper's hawks have very small, thin striping. See how, how thin and delicate the stripes are? They're very narrow, and that is a good indication of a Cooper's hawk, whereas sharp shin hawks have very thick striping. Classic sharp shin hawk, how thick the striping is on the chest versus how thin it was on the Cooper's hawk. So in the juvenile birds, the tail and the chest are better indications. In the adult birds, the cap, um, and the tail are a good combination to, to, to rely on there. Um, they can be confusing. It takes a lot of time to study, a lot of studying of them over the years. I have, and I get pictures sent to me of birds that show some characteristics of both that are very difficult to tell apart. For the most part, just know they're occipiters, and if you're happy with that, if you want the challenge of, of separating out Coopers and Shark Shin, Get as many pictures as you can, study it, and look it up and see what you can find on there. Um, it, it'll, be, it'll be one or the other, that's for sure, that are chasing the birds around your backyard. So, it's a, like I said, it's a tough subject, but with enough studying, you can get pretty good at it. So, you can always send me pictures here. I can help you identify them. Bring them by and show me on your camera. I can uh, look at them on there and, and help you identify them too. So, um, hope that enjoyed it. it it's, uh, I, like I said, it takes a lot of study. Send ideas for future programs, give the videos a like and a share, and come by and let's talk birds.